What's going on YouTube? Okay, we're gonna be working on a carrier furnace models 58 MCA. It's probably was installed 2007. And uh, we're gonna be changing out the blower motor. We know that's what the issue is. Uh, I already changed the capacitor um, and the older motor um, is just, it's had it. So it, it's kind of like stopped. It's made a really high buzzing noise. Maybe even smelt some uh, grinding of the gears per se. And the blower motor basically is what turns this big fan or blower or squirrel cage, they call it. And that basically cycles throughout your vents throughout your house. So we're going to be uh, doing this in this video. So first things first, you want to shut the power off. So that's in the off position. And then you want to move your, um, your panel. And just take it off. And inside here is like a little LED light. So if this was on, it was flashing one, like one long light and then three quick lights. And then on the back of your panel, you always have your code. So it was doing limit circuit lockout, um, which just means that when the blower motor is no longer functioning, it's having difficulty pushing the heat out. And then it just goes in the shutdown mode. And it actually will shut off for three hours. So sometimes people don't even realize what's wrong with their furnace because it just shuts off and turns back on eventually. Um, and if your motor's on its last legs, it's going to work. But on really cold days, like today, it's like 25 degrees, but this thing's been running a little bit longer, harder than when it was, you know, 35, 40 degrees. So I notice now it's failing because just the motors kind of ran out. Um, I do have a brand new motor here, so we'll be installing that. Um, I have replaced the motor on this before with a brand new one, but the brand new one was defective. This was when it was negative nine here. So I've reluctantly left the older mo the old motor in there because it's been working but now it's it's time to replace it. So I'm like, might as well do a video on it and show you guys how to do it. So anyways, the blower motor is under here. It's inside here. This is not the blower motor. Um, when you're inside here too, you just wanna make sure like all your tubes are connected. So like all these tubes here, including this here, this actually takes a condensation uh, and goes into this white thing here. And this white thing basically is in charge of discharging your excess fluids that lead to a drain. So what I had a problem with in my upstairs attic one, because I have a two unit system, is this thing was completely clogged with black stuff. Like I said, it hadn't been cleaned out since 07. And there was actually like little rust spots underneath here because this thing had filled up with so much water. So it would like work and then it would like stop working after like uh, a minute or two. It was really annoying. And I had replaced the capacitor on that blower motor as well but that wasn't the issue. It was this that was clogged. So we're going to be moving this as well as part of this video. And I'm going to do it step by step. I'm not a professional <laughs> by any means. So if some of these uh, things in this video seem kind of basic to you, well, you're probably not in need of help to, uh, to fix something like this. So first, let me raise the tripod here. So what you're going to do to take this screen off is you're going to take this screw off and this screw off and um, I got a Milwaukee bit set so this is just a you know just make sure it fits and you take those two off the door comes off pretty easily I have one of these um, magnetic things I got for um working on the cars and stuff. It's pretty cool. You just take your screws and then they, they stay in there and they don't fall out. All right, so then we're that those two screws hold this in and then you just lift up and set that aside. And then inside here, we've got our blower motor. Um, I don't know what this white thing's called, but that's where all the, the condensation falls off from the furnace. So we have to disconnect that, remove that. This is our motherboard. And on the motherboard is really important. You want to um, take a picture. It's white, black, blue, yellow, and red. These five wires we'll be removing because those five wires are connected to the blower motor. So either write it down or take a picture of it 
if you're doing this install because if you don't put the wires in correctly you're going to be pissed and nothing's going to work and that might be really bad <laughs> so all right next we're going to take these two screws out here to remove the motherboard uh, plate itself and this little thing here as well this uh, keeps a, a safety thing so even if you didn't turn off your power supply this shuts off the power supply but again you definitely want to turn off the power supply so you don't get shocked because some of these capacitors uh, can hold the charge. Alright, so we're going to take this bit off. And put the next larger bit on. Take these screws out. And you have to do this because it's, it's in the way. So, like, you can't take the blower motor out and screw it back in properly with this thing in the way. So, this thing comes out. And then there's, like, a little plate here on the side. So in order to, once you remove the wires to take the wire out so that this can uh, rest easily up top, you do have to remove that bolt right there. So I'll try and show that as best I can. So again, that's this size here. And if you guys want, if you want to wear rubber gloves, great. Um, I did cut myself up pretty bad when I didn't know what I was doing. Especially when you like start digging your hands down there, it's really easy to cut up. So anyways, this plate comes off like this. So there's a little nib here that goes in like that. When you put it back on, you just put the screw back on. So we need to remove this. We'll put that in our plate holder. And then we're only worried about the wires that we're moving. So again, we're removing the white. black, blue, the yellow, and the red. Those wires, these five wires, are what leads to the blower motor. See how they're just loose there now? So now this whole assembly, you can just put up here. Um, and I use, oh, let me show you this. I use this wire that's part of the power supply. I pull that up and I just kind of use it <laughs> to hold it in place so it doesn't fall. Cause that, that'll definitely get in your way. So just do it like that. Otherwise you're going to be disconnecting a bunch of wires that's unnecessary. Again, our main goal is just to get this big sucker out on the bottom here. Okay, so next now that we have the wires removed, we've got to deal with this here. You guys might have a different setup, so you're going to need uh, some pliers to hit the bands here. Take those out, and I've got one on this side as well. That's the fun one. So we're going to take this. tube out and while you're in it too is like you want to make sure there's nothing clogged in there because I'm telling you guys if this thing's clogged life will suck you're you will think like you fixed everything and then nothing works oh you do want to have a towel ready too because like sometimes stuff will leak out of here especially if it's clogged but while you're in here if you haven't cleaned this out before when you have this removed just take it under the sink just clean it all out, and you would be surprised all the fun little black stuff that falls out of there. I've never seen a heat and air conditioning guy uh, clean that, even during, like, furnace checks, which I think kind of are a joke. It's really just to come out and tell you, yeah, you need a new furnace, um, which makes sense because I've been quoted, like, the guy told me I need a furnace because to replace this motor, the blower motor, the labor, all this stuff involved, it's very expensive. I mean, it's, like, over $1,000. So a lot of times they'll just tell you like it's cheaper for them to just bring out a new furnace, which I guess is the case because if the guy does come out, you do spend a thousand or fourteen hundred bucks replacing all this stuff, which you'd be pretty pissed if it still doesn't work or it only lasts you another year. So sometimes when they're saying you should get a new furnace, makes sense. But um, I got the motor for one hundred fifty bucks. This capacitor here is literally five dollars at a Granger location. Um, in case you can't find an actual uh, supply shop that'll sell to you. Um, this is most commonly the thing that breaks 
when your blower motor goes because this thing just gets weak over time. So that's already been replaced. Uh, we do have to remove that. But first, let's uh, take this white thing out. So again, I'm not doing this to piss off guys that do this for a living. I'm literally just doing this for the average homeowner that maybe doesn't have the $1,500 or so to, to pay someone to do this. Um, just guys, just, you know, make sure you have the skill set to do this. But as long as you can unscrew stuff and put stuff back together, um, I don't really see what the issue is. So let me get a better angle here. So we got to remove this one. And sometimes liquid will come out of there. Uh, this one is the pressure tube. And then we got to remove this back one here, which is probably easier to remove from the top here. And then again, these all these clamps do is they just secure the, the pipes in place. And then you don't have one, I recommend, you know, get a needle nose or something. Sometimes some of these spots are going to be pretty tight. Yeah, this one's, this one's pouring water all over the joint. See that? So this gets clogged. You're, you're in trouble. <laughs> um, I actually, I think this lifts up so I can leave that little hose on there. So to get this out, you want to squeeze up here, or does it go down? I think it goes down. I forgot. Yeah, you squeeze. So you squeeze this clip here, and there's another one on the other side. You squeeze it, and then you turn it, and then you can get it out. And then here's all this. That's why I have this towel here. There's all kinds of liquid that falls out of it. But when you have this thing removed, um, you don't have to buy a new one of these. It's called, what is this called? An inducer? Oh, condensate, condensate trap. So it just collects all the condensation. But man, guys, this thing can get nasty. And if it gets clogged, you're going to be in trouble. So I would recommend cleaning it. I've already cleaned mine out, so I don't have to do it. And then I probably should grab another towel here. So like water and electricity don't mix. All right, so now that we have that removed, um, let's get our motherboard back up here and uh, let's use some of these wires to hold it up here. Yeah, I'll show you a little trick here. Let's take the wire and kind of bend it around. Again, just to hold the motherboard up in place here. Again, just, just to keep it out of the way because there's no reason to disassemble that. All right, so now that we've done that, um, there's basically two bolts that hold the blower motor assembly in place. There's one on the left and one on the right. Um, I believe it uses uh, this bolt right here. So um, let me see if I can show that. I'm going to probably have to remove my phone. Uh, you guys see it? Yep, I can see it. So there's this, this screw here, or that screw, and then this bolt here. Right there. So we're going to be uh, taking those out, and then this whole assembly comes out this way. You just pull it towards you. Um, if you notice, too, it doesn't sit on the floor. It's literally just those two bolts, and then there's like a little flange that holds the whole assembly. It's heavy, too. So again, you must clear out everything. So I'm going to get this out of the way. And then make sure you have some sort of workspace uh, where this is all going to sit because you're going to be taking this whole thing out and it's heavy. All right. So let me put my phone back on the tripod and do that. Um, I'm not the youngest. I'm 46. So I put these knee pads on that are padded because I'm about to get down and dirty. You younger guys or you guys with like indestructible knees probably laughing like, dude, just go on your knees and like undo that. But um, that's not how I roll. I've done this too many times and I don't feel like having knee pain uh, later on. All right. Now my particular drill does have a light on it. 
so I can see. But if you don't have a light on your drill, I highly recommend having a light at this point. Um, some guys like to wear these things to kind of help see what you're doing. Light is very important. There we go. You don't want stuff hitting you. All right, you're going to do this. Came one. No, no, that came up nice and easy. Don't want to strip the bolts. Stripping bolts will be bad. All right, we had to take that one out by hand just because of where the assembly is. Uh, motor was in the way. All right, so then you take your two hands, put on either side, and just pull, 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 pull. And the whole thing comes out. So there's the scroll cage. That's what it all looks like. And there's the blower motor that we're going to replace with some funky bolts. And this thing in here is called the the scroll cage. Um, I replaced mine just because I don't really think I have to because I thought it was the scroll cage that was like grinding or crooked, but chances are it's not the scroll cage, but a lot of times they'll, they'll replace it anyways. So anyways, this bolt here has to line up with the flat part from the motor so I'm gonna have to remove this to take the motor out I'm going to 
Probably just leave it loose because that'll pop out. You don't need to take the whole thing out. All right, then you flip your assembly over. Make sure I'm showing you guys the correct thing here. So now we gotta take these four bolts out. This motor's hot because it's just failing and it's been running. So we're gonna take these off. Um, I thought I had my bolts already up, but I don't. It's so funny. I have like really nice sockets and stuff. And I always use this cheap China one that I bought like 30 years ago when I was a teenager. But as long as it works, don't worry about it. But I do have nicer ones like for the car, so don't laugh at my tools. Seven sixteenth seems to be the one. Also, I'm not the I'm not the kind of guy that like memorizes what size is what. So I'm a if it fits, it fits <laughs> kind of person. But it looks like seven sixteenths. on here and then this is the part that fixes um i probably could do this with a drill but sometimes the drill is just it's too fast and i don't want to like strip a bolt oh and there's like little rubber things here too that kind of help center everything so it is important that Everything's like level. Dude, you don't want to put a motor in and have it like all crooked. Because then your squirrel fan inside will be all crooked and then stuff will scrape. And then if it's unbalanced too, like it's going to make a lot of noise. So I'll show you when we get these parts off. And again, that's what it looks like. All right, so let's take this away, and let's use the towel, because it probably is hot. Oh, and we do have to uh, disconnect the capacitor from this. So you don't want to disconnect it here on the motor, because that screw goes like all the way down. It's a big pain in the butt, so just disconnect it from the side here. So you take two brown wires off in that one, and then you're gonna use two new brown wires on the new motor. So I almost forgot to mention that. You don't wanna be yanking. You don't wanna be yanking on a on a motor and then strip your capacitor wires. That would be Flying, flying, and then here's the holder for that, and then you can just remove your capacitor. So that's what the capacitor looks like. This is the capacitor. If you ever have to replace it, um, just make sure it meets the exact specs. And like I said, it's a five dollar part, which is usually usually the culprit of a failing blower motor. Because if your capacitor shot, then it starts wearing down the blower motor, and eventually your blower motor dies because your capacitor shot. It's not just it's not sending the correct voltage to the motor. So that's probably what most likely happened because this capacitor was super old, um, over 15 years old. All right, so now we're gonna take this part out. 
and again it removed nicely and here's where we want to probably take this blower assembly away and we're now going to take this bracket off and put that on our new motor so i'm going to put this over here now and let's see if i can do a better video showing this part shadow out of the way so we're going to take this bolt off here we're going to loosen it and then we're going to take these parts off but first let's get our newer motor ready now this is a the same exact ge motor Hopefully it's not defective like the Gentech one that I ordered before, but um, this is the motor model number you want to use, and you want to use the old GE one. Um, so this one's refurbished, whatever, it's all nice. And the important part is it still has all the clips on it. So when you are buying this, there's some guys that you can tell like just stripped it out and they're so lazy they just cut all these wires. That's a pain in the butt. That'll add another... 10 minutes of time so might as well get one that already has a clips so let's plug and play and again don't take that screw out of the neutral or whatever this is or the ground that's a nightmare but overall this motor is really clean inside so there's no dust and it is a ge1 so hopefully replacing this will make it last another whatever years um i need to get a marker because and a tape measure, so I'll be right back because I don't want to screw this up. All right, I had to run, run upstairs, grab a tape measure and a marker. So, what you want to do is look at your old motor and your new motor, and you want to recreate the bracket onto the new motor. And if you can kind of tell here, these are all kind of teetered off. So you, you want the bracket to go exactly like on the new one. So I'm going to just kind of like eyeball it. Yeah, it looks about one inch and an eighth. So we're going to want... Just eyeballing it. <laughs> this looks so janky, but at least give me an idea of where the bracket should be. On the device, and let's turn it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Actually, this is totally different. You got to go by where the wires are at. So, and then it looks like the best part to put the screw is where the wires are to match that one. So that's where we're going to have our screw. All right, well, I guess that's good enough. Um, oh, I noticed one of the rubber things fell off. Crapola. Where did that go? Where's the rubber thing? Oh, I almost lost it. Yeah, we don't want to lose these. That would suck. I think you can buy a new one of these, too. And put that in by hand. Don't be getting all aggressive. And start stabbing it. See, it's the same bolt. Yes, it is. 
All right, let's take this bracket off. And this will require a um, screwdriver here, or not screwdriver, a wrench here. And then I'll have to hold the other one at the same time. I'm going to pause it here so this video isn't a million seconds long. All right. I almost got this thing off. It's been like five minutes, so you probably can do this with a drill, but I prefer to torture myself. Side, it's still and ready to go. <clears throat> All right, so this bolt part was by the wires, so that's where we want this to be. part is getting all the individual legs on separately so again I'll pause it after I get them all in all right we got them all on and just kind of like shimmy them in there and make sure they're all kind of in their square and then as you tighten you just want to make sure they're all level so that when you put this back on it's not all crooked so I'm gonna pause it again I'm gonna tighten this bolt and then we'll go to the next step all right, so you want to make sure it's on there as level as possible. I probably have it a little up too high, but I might have to move it down a little bit. But these do move, these do have a little bit of play. Just make sure they're all on nice and snug. Um, I think I'm okay the way I did it here. I'm gonna actually lower it a little bit. Let me pause it again. So when you loosen it, you can then take both your hands and then just kind of shift it up, but don't loosen it so much where it just falls. So now I'm gonna tighten it. All right, then you wanna tighten it to a point where these two parts are touching. So that way, and again, 